They have at least 30. I know. Can I? Okay. Yeah. We're like this. Damn right. Okay. Joining us now with more uh, data points that could sway the Fed's upcoming decision, Larry Lindsay, knew exactly what I was talking about. President Duke, he's also a former Federal Reserve Governor. Maybe I'll get you started with Steve on. He thinks it's crazy for the Fed to have any rules of any kind about doing anything, that it should be totally seat of the pants, depends on who's in there. They feel like raising rates, dropping rates, whatever, you know, whatever they feel like, you know, whatever they think is for, right. For, for the record, Larry, he completely misstates Just position, hopefully we but, put the right person but, in there, but, Larry. But feel free to answer the question in defense of rules. Well, 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 central banks are the closest that God has come to perfection, so I have to agree with Steve. <laughs> um, just kidding. Uh, so, um, uh, we, uh, you know, I, I do think that the right thing to do is to leave the Fed maximum flexibility. Uh, if the um, Congress and the President don't like it, uh, <clears throat> well, they're grilled regularly before the Congress. They could be grilled more regularly. But once you set a rule, uh, as, as we learned, for example, in, in recent times, that we focused, for example, only on price inflation, and we neglected asset inflation. That's why we've had three bubbles. Of course, the third bubble, we deliberately tried to create asset inflation. So I, I'm, um, I, I be, would rather have the Fed uh, try and explain itself rather than be constrained by rules. Hey, Larry, I want to follow up with some sympathy on the other side, which is I get where this is coming from. It's coming from frustration. It's coming from a sense that the Fed put it at zero, left it there, and concern about what happens on, on, uh, uh, the, as a result of, of zero interest rates. Um, the Fed acted uh, to, in extraordinary ways during the financial crisis, lending to AIG, lending to Bear Stearns, trying to lend to Lehman Brothers, and that's why you have Dodd-Frank. So, in a sense, it's fair to say that the, the critics of the Federal Reserve uh, they have support in, in, in the Fed's own actions. Is there what, what should the Fed have done or could, could it do now to kind of alleviate those concerns? Well, well, I'm there in the minute saying it uh, when I was there. I think that the idea of letting an asset bubble run is one of the most foolish things the central bank can do. They always end badly. <clears throat> and in this case, what we've done is one, the first one ended badly, we, uh, we let it run too long and created a second one, and now I think we're letting it run too long and creating a third one. Uh, the Fed really needs to have a long-term focus, and unfortunately, when you encourage an asset bubble as a process of running monetary policy, uh, you're taking an immediate focus. It's very popular in the beginning. Everyone loves the upside. But uh, the cleaning up the mess on the downside is bad, and I think that's really where the problem is. Asset bubbles should not be, should not be a substitute for long-run prudent monetary policy ever. Mm. It feels pretty good still, Larry, um, every time it looks it, like they're not going to move. It does feel good. Around the world it feels good. Absolutely. It's a party. It's a party. And uh, everyone loves a party. Uh, parties always end badly, particularly when they go on for, in this case, I guess, seven years. Uh, you know, the hangover is going to be pretty bad. That still remains to be seen, though. There, there's no... Home. We don't have any evidence that it's going to end badly at this point. Well, at this point, it's never going to end, right? That's, that's what we're thinking. <laughs> yeah, but and, have and, you guys... At four in the morning, at most of the parties I've been to, uh, people think it's never going to end either. And they're never going to have to drive home. Uh, but uh, we are, and... Um, I don't think that running a, uh, again, a, a bubble or asset price oriented uh, monetary policy is appropriate. Certainly what was necessary to clean up the last bubble, you had to do something in 09, um, uh, but uh, 08, 09, <clears throat> but running it for seven years is just not the right thing to do. Have you seen I the pound this morning? The question show? was, isn't that the cause of the frustration? And yes, so it's the yeah. cause of the frustration. Yeah. Uh -huh. So are you going to London again soon? No. Nope. The, the, the pound around 150, uh, Larry, uh, the euro under 106. So this is the negative side here, guys, is that uh, yeah. we, we're, we're moving, but, but the, the separation is, is, is coming. Hey, Larry, I, I don't know why. Well, I, well I, your I, central I, bank's running at different paces. Excuse me. Central no. bank's running at different paces. That's going to happen. Yeah, okay. And we're now at the point where the only transmission mechanism for monetary policy is through the exchange rate. That's a sign yeah. that, you know, globally we're really on our last legs. We're out of ammunition. Hey, Larry, I don't know why. too much for too long. I don't know why I want your opinion because you told me Romney was going to win. But, but who's going to win the GOP uh, nomination in your view? Um, Dan Defino. Don't know him. Never heard of him.